them ladies in jail. They wish they was out here with the rest of us, because some of them in there for a long, long time. Hallelujah. And, you know, so we got the freedom to, to worship the Lord, so let's just, you know, we need to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'm just so excited. You know, I'm kind of off work for a while. You know, I work at the school, and we don't work during the, the summertime. That's just right up my alley. Hey. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. So I get a chance to go now, so I'm, I'm liking it. Yes. But anyway, I've just been enjoying myself in these services. I mean, it's been so rich, and God has been just, I mean, I just, I feel a touch that yes. I hadn't felt in a long time, yes. in a long time. And I'm excited about that, because I know yes. God's. God's getting ready to do something. Yes. You know, like I, I, I was sharing that dream that, you know, about the man of God come to me in a dream and he had a folder in his hand and, you know, he, he was crying and he said, this report, he said, I've got to get somebody to declare this report for me. And, you know, and he was looking for some people he could give it to. And so I, I said, well, can I see it and he opened it up and it was like a bunch of cut up newspapers you know like somebody cut articles out of newspapers and that was the report that he had in there and it, he said it's all here he said everything is ready he said but I need somebody to declare it for me it's like I don't know it's like he needed some help he said I need somebody to declare this report for me and you know I knew when I woke up Brother Bubba, I knew that God is, uh, that scripture coming to me over there in Isaiah, you know, like he said, who shall declare his report? Yeah. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And I believe we're in that day that God's arm seeks to be revealed in yeah. us. I do. I know it. I mean, I can feel it. You know, it come a time when the children of Israel, when at 400 years, finally came. You know, think about it. A lot of people died long them times never saw the promise they they heard it but it never come to pass while he was alive but just think that was a generation hallelujah that reaped the benefits of that promise and how many know i believe we're coming we're right at the door and i do i want to reap the benefits of it i do i do i love the lord this morning i do with all my heart I don't have no other reason to live but for Jesus. Yeah, Lord, amen.
All right, he wants to be saying it. Amen. I'm gonna sing this song. You know, I'm, God give me a song one night. Brother Reed was preaching on love <coughs> yesterday in the lingo, and I'm telling you, that'll make you search yourself because yes, it's, it's a lot you gotta come up to. I'm telling you, but I'll just thank you. But I'm gonna tell you something. You know, I I dreamed that one night, and you know what? In that dream, I have a lot of dreams. <laughs> But anyway, I had dreamed this this angel, big old tall man, come to me in a dream. He said, you know, people think they're going to make it to heaven because of maybe how much they pray or how much they fast. And he looked at me, he said, but God judges a man by his personality. That's what he said in the dream. And when he said personality, I didn't understand what he meant. And he knew it. it's like he could read my mind. And then he looked. In the, and he knew I didn't understand. And he told me, he said, God judges a man by how much love he has. That's mm. what he said. And, then, and he gave me the words to this song. He just started quoting that script, the scriptures over there in um, Corinthians chapter second, chapter 13. Corinthians, you know, the love chapter. Though you have all, if you give all your body to be burned and you don't have charity, it don't profit you nothing. Started quoting all them scriptures. And so when I woke up, I, I just put this little song here together. It's all in the Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Now by His faith, hope and charity, but the greatest of these three,
shout praise the Lord. Amen. Oh. Love to hear Sister Carol say, Come on, somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad to be in the house of God today, amen? Yes, amen. Come on. How many is glad to be here? Today? Amen. Oh, my God. 
Nobody else had the means to purchase us, buy us. Thought about Ruth, you know how he purchased her. Praise God. When, when she would have fell to someone else, he, he already had a wife. But she fell to Boaz. And then knows that God had it all planned in the lineage. He had it all planned to do what he had planned to do. And, and sometimes we sort of feel on the edge when God's already got it planned out. Yeah. Feel like, you know, it's something that somebody done right then. And I know we have to <coughs> father it out. But I know that God had it planned. Jesus was planned to be born and to die on an old rugged cross. Before man was even made, created, Jesus had already been crucified in the foreknowledge of God. Give me some water, regular water, not cold water. Jesus. Don't you love him? Amen. I've been using this whole voice, and that's what you do when you use it. Praise the Lord. I'll get it out. That's something 
gets to be broke. We have to preach it out. And I'm glad today. What about you? Amen. That, that God already had it planned. He already had it planned. For Jesus to die on an old rugged cross before man was even formed from the dust of earth. Jesus, God had already planned things out. What we have to do is just read the word and believe it. Stand on it. And I'll tell you, God's able to bring it all to pass. Yes. Do you believe that? Amen. I'm thankful today. Praise God all that the Lord and you go and read the scriptures, and that's why Paul said, study, show thyself approved unto God, didn't he? Amen. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, yes. but rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise God. And I was just thinking, and praying this morning about, because there's so much into the word of God, if you dig it out, it's sort of like a gold mine. You know, you dig and then you keep digging and you keep finding. Just even in one scripture, in the word of God, if you just dig and God see that you're hungry for it, then he begins to open it up to you. And you'll find that there's much more there. How many has ever <coughs> listened to a message on a tape or CD? You listen to it, and you was there in the service. But you, you start hearing things, you say, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't get that. And there was so, <clears throat> so much that you got out of it the second time, till you listened to it the third time. And then on the third time, you still heard something you didn't hear the first and second time. That's right. yes. Yes, so there are a lot being said by the Holy Ghost. And we're not grasping a lot of times. And that's why it's so needful. And people used to do that. It was pressed and pushed. People would pray two hours for service. They'd have a spiritual mind. And that's why it seemed like that the Word of God took people farther. And they had more joy. That the, the, the hearts are sold out to God in a greater way. Praise God. But... They got more out of what God was saying. Yes. And a lot of times you go back, one of them takes you, you listen to it third or fourth time, and you're still getting stuff yes. that you didn't get the first, second, and third time. Uh, you think, how could this be? How could I miss that treasure? It was sad. But a lot of times the level of... <clears throat> Of our spirit at that time, just don't get down into it and really realize what's been spoken. But the one thing about God, the Holy Ghost, that's why not only should the preacher fast and pray, but the congregation too. To bring us in that realm together. Where later on down the line, the test is given. And you wonder where did that question come from? Yeah. And the teacher will open the book and says, right here. That's right. This is what I told you to read and study on such and such day. But I did read. But you didn't read that. I read it all. Yeah. But you didn't comprehend it. That's right. So there are a lot being said that we need to pray and say, God. Let me comprehend. That's why we need, uh, we don't need to, our minds be scattered and thinking on this, what you're going to do over here. But it's right. important. The right. lessons of God, the teachings of God is the most important thing in this life. Amen. You miss everything else, but don't miss God. Amen. Amen. Well, you miss the riches. You miss the good times. You miss, you miss, uh, being rich. You miss being a billionaire. But don't miss God. Because right. after this life, billionaire is no more than nobody else. 
That's right. Amen. What, what, what you gain in this life is nothing to do with the next life. But most of the time, 99% of the time, usually the person that's rich took all of his time getting there and he never did get no God. And then when his life comes to an end, he's got all his riches. Oh, everybody knows he's rich. Everybody sees him when he drives by. But when he stands before God, he's no more than the rich man that's already there. And that's why I put that in the scripture. He said, what would it profit a man? <coughs> what would it profit a man? If he would gain the whole world and lose his soul, what would a man give and exchange for his soul? Praise God. So the most important thing is being prepared to meet God. Being born again. The great debt that Jesus paid for us. It's an awful thing to let it go to waste. It's an awful thing to let it pass you by. And then stand at the end. And what Jesus went through didn't do you no good. See, what it is is a debt of sin that got, it's got, it has to be paid. Man was condemned from Adam. After Adam, every person was conceived in sin. But God sent Jesus, his only begotten son, to, to lay down his life and redeem us back to God. Amen. To bring us back to him. And all that Jesus went through and all the suffering that he went through won't matter a thing to you. Praise God. If you don't receive him while he's here. Amen. You know, I thought about the rich man. The Bible speaks about the rich man. How he fared selflessly. And there was a beggar that laid at his gate. He didn't ask for much. He just asked for the crumbs. That, was, that fell from his table. The Bible said... <coughs> That moreover, the dogs had more compassion on the rich man, on, on, on the beggar, than the rich man. Now the crumbs, not only the crumbs, he could have given him a good meal and it wouldn't have hurt him. But he denied him of the crumbs. And I, I thought about this. This was probably the last chance for the rich man to redeem his soul. Because this was before Somewhere it happened because the Bible said there was a certain rich man. Yeah, right. I'm sure it's happened many times, something close to it. But the, this this thing actually happened because it, it became the Word of God. Right. It is the Word of God to us. He said there was a certain rich man that fared something. Man had everything at his fingertips. I can see him now sitting on his mansion on the hill with his Iron gates to protect him and his chauffeurs and his servants. But there was a beggar in his gate, no doubt, was his last opportunity to redeem himself before he left. Maybe, the Bible don't say, but maybe if he'd have reached, walked through that gate, picked up that beggar, brought him in the house, let him take a bath and give him a suit of clothes and set him down to a good meal. That might have been his redemption. Amen. I don't know. Yes. But I'll tell you one thing. The Bible put it in there and he missed the opportunity. That's right. And then after that he lifted his eyes up hell. So it had to have something to do with him. That's right. What he did and the actions he took had to have to do something with his eternity. Because it was right there together. It was in the same story. That's right. The same story. And the Bible says that the rich man lathers after that. The Bible said the dogs had more compassion. And they licked his sores. So he was a sick man. Yeah. He was a sick man. A lot of time, a lot of time people 
you know, when you get when you get on up there, they won't they don't want to touch nobody sick. They don't want to touch nobody got sores. That's right. Yeah. But okay. compassion is different. Yeah. Jesus is different. Jesus come to yeah. heal the suffering. You yes, see, people with sores and leprosy. And heaven knows if you're not careful, you'll get out of the category of having compassion and you'll forget where you came from. Yes, <coughs> you know, we all have to come to the point in our mind to have compassion on others. I ain't always been I ain't always been saved. I was lost one time. I was bound like that person. Amen. That's right. Come on. That's right. But you can actually, not in, not in real salvation, you can't, but in religion. Because I've heard of situations, someone was telling me that they went to this church out in Texas and, and, and they had an old chalopy, you know, smoking and popping, leaking oil. <laughs> And you know, some places just don't want that kind of car parked in their parking lot. Right. They told them, they said, look, you can't park that here. You make the rest of us look bad. Oh, yes. now, now, they tell me this is supposed to be a hospital, a spiritual hospital where leaking cars comes, where sick folks come, where lost people come, where people's on their down and they're out and, and they need prayer and they need to, they look and they're searching. For help. And the church is supposed to be a spiritual hospital. Just like people come. But you know you can get up and up and get up in religion. And you can get above. And you don't want these kind of people around. Because you make you look. And these are the kind of people that come to the hospital. You know the hospital is the worst place you never go. The doctor told me that one time. Yeah. He, you know, he said, this is where all the diseases show up. People feel safe all just in the door of the hospital. He said, this is where all the diseases come. This is where all the sickness is on. If a person's sick, he's headed to the hospital. He says, it's best to stay away from this place just as far as you can. Don't ever come around unless you have to. That's right. Amen. Because this is where all the diseases show up. Folks in need trying to get help. Yeah. But that rich man would not give him the crumbs. The Bible said the dogs had more compassion than the rich man and they licked his sword. And licked his soul. And the Bible called that compassion. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they licked his soul. But the Bible said that Lazarus died. I guess the sickness took him on out. Whatever he had at source, he died. Yeah. But he was a child of Abraham. Yeah. He was a child of Abraham of faith that believed. He was in that lineage. Yeah. And the Bible said he was taken to Abraham's bosom. Right. Hmm. He was taken up to Abraham. That promise. Yeah. That faith. Yeah. That weight. Yeah. That place of of, of dying in the faith, seeing it afar off, not obtaining it, thank God, but seeing it afar off, and held on to it and died in the faith that he might obtain a better resurrection. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible said in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. They died in the faith. They saw to fall off. They believed that the Messiah was coming. They believed that deliverance was coming to Israel. They believed. 
It hadn't come yet, but they believed it was coming. They believed the promise. He told Abraham, he said, in thy seed, not seeds. In thy seed shall all the nations be blessed. And he said, he's talking about that seed, which meaning one, which meaning Christ. In Jesus yep. shall the whole human race be blessed. Oh, we have the greatest blessing. We have a blessing this morning. Thank God to the love of God. To the death of the cross. Jesus come to redeem us. We were lost. We were without God. We were without a Savior. We were undone. But Jesus come when there was no hope. He became our hope. And so Lazarus was one of these. He was the seed of Abraham. And he was taken to Abraham's bosom. Died. And the Bible said these died in the faith. In the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Not having received the promise. But saw it far off. Praise God. And caressed him. Yes. Whatever hope got a bulldog hope. On the promise of God. Hallelujah. Yes. And refused to die without it. Refused to, to go and leave this life without faith in God. Without faith in the promise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, how many knows if you leave here with that faith and that promise, with that faith in the blood of Jesus, with that faith. And I know they was waiting on it, but we're not waiting on it. Praise God. We have it. It's ever present. It's right here with us today. Hallelujah. The great promise. The great promise of the Holy Ghost. The great promise of redemption. The great promise. We have it. We feel it. We possess it. In our souls today. We have what they were waiting on. We have what they were waiting on in the land of chapter of Hebrews. They was waiting on salvation. Thank you, Jesus. They was waiting on redemption. Hallelujah. 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 We are redeemed by the blood of Christ. What do you mean redeemed? I'm talking about pulled out of the gutter. Pulled out of darkness. Transformed. Translated. Changed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Saved from our sins. Delivered from the curse that came on man because of the law. Jesus redeemed us from that curse. The Bible said, Curse is everyone that's hanging on a tree. Jesus became a, my curse. Jesus became a curse for you. To be cursed is to be lost. That full curse comes on a person. That's when Jesus says, Depart from me. You work of a naked. I never knew you. That's the fullness of the curse. But the joy of salvation. And the joy of redemption. He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's in reach today. It's in reach. Praise God. It ain't hard to get to. It ain't hard to obtain. Hallelujah. It ain't hard to obtain. The greatest riches that man has ever known is not hard to obtain. This life will fool you like he fooled the rich man. Came to the point he saw no reason to have compassion. He didn't have no. The dogs had more compassion. And the dogs licked the man's sores. I mean, Jesus, so to speak, humbled himself like the dog and licked our sores. 
Jesus. When the world turned their back on you, Jesus will come to you when you throw it out, when you give up on it. When all men turns their back on you, so I don't want nothing to do with you. Jesus will come to you. He'll pick you up. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Yes, he'll do it like you've done to man. Oh, yes. The good Samaritan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got beat up and told in the ditch. Along come the priest. Oh, he's done high religious to fool with this man, beat up and bloody. This kind of people to fool with them. If anybody see me with this kind of man, what would they think of me? My God, that's the kind of people they need to see us with. We're not looking for prestige. We're not looking, praise God, for some kind of special place in this life. We're looking for souls. We're hunting. We're on the hunt. Praise God. We're sniffing around every corner. We're looking for a dying man. We're looking for somebody in the ditch. That's what we're supposed to be looking for. Somebody in the ditch. Somebody suicidal. Somebody that the devil's about to push over the edge and they don't know how to put on brakes. You got folks today are going over the edge and they don't have no brakes. But to be seen with these kind of people. They may not smell like we do. They may not have a bath. I'm sure the old lad that hadn't had one either. But to talk was compassionate. Come on. The dog was compassionate. But the rich man, praise God, had no compassion. Didn't even give him the crumbs. He just asked for the crumbs. Or you could have put him in something and thrown him over the fence. He'd have been glad to get him. But he had no compassion. Praise God. And you know that these, this is what Jesus sent us to do. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. So the priest saw the man beat up in there. And because most churches today won't want certain level of people. Money people, most of them, they want people can do something for them. That's right. They ain't got nothing to do nothing with them for. But they just want somebody to do something for them. Uh, yes. These are the kind of people they seek out. So they told this couple in Texas they had an old jalopy was smoking and popping and leaking oil. Probably had four maypops on it, you know what that is. <laughs> Probably one like working. Have any of y'all ever been there? Yeah. Any good to be out the ditch? Yeah. Any good to have two lights now and have an air conditioner to not have to touch the windows down and sweat? Yeah. Yes, it is. Come on. Yeah. But you don't need to forget that one. That's, yeah. right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. on the side of the road and won't crank. That's right. Amen. Sweating down, all the little children sticking their head out, <laughs> sweating like a horse. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Having compassion. That's right. And forbearance. And love. Yes. Do you realize this is what it's all about? Yes. The church has got about having new cars, new houses, big bank account. That, that's what God is. And they have missed it. They have missed the realness of what Jesus come to do. Yes. And Jesus left the streets of gold. Yes. He left heaven. That's right. And came down here to die from a bunch of murder. He didn't have to do it. But if he hadn't done it, where would we be today? See, there's somebody, if you don't take time to help them, 
They, they'll never pull out. That's right. They'll never put that gun to the head tomorrow. There are people there and they, they, they can't help it. We can blame them if we want to, but they're there. Yes, they made a mistake. Yes, they did this wrong. They did that wrong. But their life is on the edge now. And they almost can't take no more. And the devil's got them shoved at the edge of the cliff. Just like they had some of us. That's right. Where can I go now? What am I going to do now? But somehow through God's mercy, he reached down. And he pulled you out. They gave you mercy. They gave you a chance. Praise God. Somebody prayed for you. Maybe you. Some person way back there. Bottled up some tears. God saw you in that condition. And he was just looking for a reason to help you. You really wasn't calling on him. You'd lost all that hope. God just searching for a reason to have mercy. See, God's got to have. God's got to have something to move him. And then he reaches back and says, Do you have any grandmother or grandfather or forefather? Do you have any bottles with their name on it? Do you have any tears bottled up? Or somebody pray? Somebody asked for their grandchildren or their great grandchildren. Just one little drop of tear. Just one. Is there one? And he pours out that bottle of tears. And he finds one tear with their name on it. He said, that's enough. He reaches. He can do it when he gets ready. And he grabs a hold of them. And he pulls them out. That's what you call compassion. God remembering the prayers of the saints. God remembering when you pray. Hallelujah. Just like you praying now, somebody prayed before you. Just like you praying, God, don't let my children be lost. God, please save them. God, reach out and touch them. Give them a dream. Do something, Lord. Don't let them go to hell. Save them, Lord. Pull them back in. Don't let them get out there too far. See, God remembers those prayers. And see, what we've got to be settled in, God answers prayer. And we've got to believe that when we pray, these prayers ain't just going somewhere in the graveyard. They're standing up there. The prayer of faith stands up there and they pour me at God. He said, don't let me get no rest. God told him, said, don't y'all let me sleep. Don't let me get no rest. Worry me day and night. I said, don't let me get no rest. Y'all yes. give me too much rest. I want to hear you. I want to hear you in the early in the morning. I want to hear you at 2 o'clock. I want to hear you at 3 a.m. You're giving me too much rest. I've got too much time on my hands. I want to hear you. Worry me. Torment me. Don't let me sleep day or night. Don't let me rest. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. There's a world out there and we have the same opportunity and Jesus has set us here and give us the opportunity that he had to play our life down. He laid his life down for us. Now he said, won't you do the same thing? Don't you lay your life down for others like I did for you? Would you be willing to give? That's what. Give? Give of what? Yourself? Your time? For others? That they can be saved? That they won't be lost? Can you think in your mind somebody you know or somebody you love and the most awful thought you can have is them dying without God. It's, it's unimaginable to me. I get shook up and nervous. When I'm riding down the road and I think about somebody being lost, I get tore all to pieces. That's the worst thought I can have. Somebody turned me going to a lake of fire. It's real. Oh, 
Hallelujah. You know, through your life, you, you, you love children grow up. And most all of y'all have grown up. And I'm still around. Yes. I ain't dead yet. Hey. Yes. Amen. And all y'all have grown up around me. And you're my children. I love you. Oh, yeah. I really love you. Yeah. I may beat you on the head. <laughs> I may preach to you so hard I feel sorry for you myself. <laughs> But to get back up there and come back out like a lion again, like I'm half mad. I ain't mad. I'm mad at the devil. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I want to. I want to see you saved. Yeah. See when I get, when we make it and we get over yonder together, then I won't be hooping and hollering at you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be rejoicing. Yeah. Yes, Lord. We're giving God the glory for him and yeah. And you're thankful for being tough. Yes, sir. You're thankful about letting you by by just letting God speak to your heart. Yeah. And speak speak into your heart and speak to your spirit and tell you the truth. And give you something that will pull you out. Yeah. Give you something solid. Amen. 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 I said, give you something solid. But the dogs, you look at this, there is a dog that compassion. The dogs have compassion, more compassion than the rich man. A dog. And a dog ain't supposed to have no feelings in that way. But he had more compassion than a man could have fixed that sick man's life. The dog couldn't fix it, but he did all he could do. He lived his And it's written in the Bible how the dog licked the man. But the Bible said, Lazarus died, which taken Abraham's bosom. And also, the rich man died. The Bible said, in hell, when he opened his eyes, he looked at his eyes up, he was in hell. From a palace, from servants, from anything he wanted, to hellfire. Boom, boom. He lifted his eyes up. What a difference without God. What a difference it makes when you die with Jesus. Amen. You die without him. He lifted his eyes up in hell. Being in torment. He saw Lazarus again. He wasn't at his gate begging for the crumbs. He was in paradise. He was in Abraham's bosom. He didn't need no crumbs. Now he had the best. But the things have turned around. And now the rich man is begging. And Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom. He knows death can change everything around. Yes. In a moment's time. Yes, sir. The one that was begging ain't begging no more. But the one on earth that had everything that didn't have to beg, now he's begging because his money is left behind. Yes. His prestige, his money, his castle, his gold and his silver, it ain't with him. He couldn't take it with him. See, the thing about it is, folks, no matter what you gain in this life, there comes a time, you can't take it with you. You get rid of me. You know what they said? The prophet said, your gold and your silver will not depend on if there's a tornado coming your way. I don't care how rich you are. A tornado don't care. It's a world. It's turning everything up. Chewing it up. Chewing it up like sawdust. Trees, houses. Taking it down to the foundation. You jump up there and say, I'm Mr. Jones. <laughs> that tornado don't even answer you back. He's just churning. But the 
makes a difference. Yeah. When you fall on your knees and say, I'm going to see you right now. Tornado stop. Go to the right. You can go to the right or you can go to the left or you can lift up. Make your choice. But you can't come to me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, how many, how many knows it's different when you're a seed of Abraham? It's a difference. It's a difference when the power of the Holy Ghost rests on your life. You can't speak to a storm. You can't. I was over here at the house one day. I'll tell you what I'll tell you about another. One of them bad hair came from, I forget what the name is. It was taking trees down on this side of the road. Trees that almost going down all up. And God told me to stay. And I was on the front porch across the road over there. And the leaf wasn't blowing. God is not. Yeah. The grass wasn't even moving. The trees were falling on this side of the road. It was going bang, bang, snap. And I was sitting on the porch. And my children playing in the yard. And the leaves weren't moving on that side of the road. It astounded me while I was going on. I looked over there. I looked over there. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Is he that kind of God? Will God take care of you? Well, is his promises real? You better believe they are. That's the truth. Before God, trees are popping on this side of the road. Twisting. I can see them doing like this. Go back the other way. Pow! We were standing on the porch. And the leaves, the grass wasn't moving right there. Hallelujah. Yes, he's that kind of God. You've been a seed of Abraham? See, if you don't know God, that tornado don't pay you no attention. But if you're a child of God, you can say, you can tell that tornado, look, you can go to the right, or you can go to the left, or you can go up over me. I forbid you to come this way. Hey. And he gives us the authority. Yes. Behold, I give unto you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you. There was another time I was there at the house by myself. And my wife was going to call me and said, said Said there's a tornado coming down Dockton Road. I said, What? I looked up, run inside, turn the news on, and they were saying, Get take cover, take cover, there's a tornado coming down Dockton Road. And I looked and I saw it. And I called the next door neighbor, nobody went to call Joe. I said, Better get out, there's a tornado coming down Dockton Road. He said, What? I said, There's a tornado. In about a minute, they was in the pickup, headed down the road, and he was waving. Come on. He was gone. <laughs> He'd get off top of the road. And I'd jump with me, get my truck to go, and God said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting out here. There's a tornado <laughs> coming down top of the road. He said, you stay. I said, what? Stay? I said, there's a tornado coming down top of the road. He said, you stay. I'm just about going to run from a line and run into a bat. Run out and have a wreck. Kill myself. Disobeying God. But you know, God will just do things to prove himself to you. And he has throughout the years. He's proved himself to so many of us. Look, God, but you know, we can let that get so weak in us. But he's proved himself so many times, so many times. I just heard you, but Sister Danielle, tell me about that tumor on her brain. 
out and prayed for him. And I said, it ain't nothing going to be there when you go back and check it. Went back and they couldn't find nothing. And you talking about death. You talking about cancer on the brain. You ain't here for long. And that cancer that dried up. When you got there and they looked and it was just like God said. It dried up and fell off. Many of you over and over. Michelle, my kid. Henry's brain blown up. Went in there. The Gordon had to fix it and he went there and said, There ain't nothing to fix. Hallelujah. There wasn't nothing to fix. God had already fixed it. Yeah. Over and over. was there, but it ain't there no more. I can't understand. I said, I do. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, why did God let these things happen? I don't know, but I, I'm pretty well sure he allows things to come on people of faith where we can believe and show his glory Amen. to the world. Because if something don't happen sometime, ain't nobody going to believe in nothing. So keep faith alive. And see, God is sure. God is sure yes. of what He's going to do. Yes. It's just us that have a battle with. God ain't got no battle with healing cancer. Yes. We have yes. a battle with believing God. Come on now, man. Yes. Yes. Because yes. yes. it's the death sentence, you know. Cat doctor comes in and gives you the death sentence. They used to have pity on you, but they don't have no pity on you anymore. Oh, you got a couple months, six months to live. Yeah. Don't get your bearing polish no. no, I was in Birmingham and had a tent up. They was just <coughs> up there praying one morning. The brother come up and I could tell he was all down and out and he walked in and he sat down. I said, Brother, what's wrong? He said, Well, it's rough. I said, well, what's rough? He said, I, I just went down to the mark and paid down on my funeral and bought my suit. I said, what would you do that for? He said, well, the doctor told me to go ahead and get my funeral ready because I was going to die. I said, is that what you want to do? He said, no. I said, well, you don't have to die. He said, who told you that? I said, Jesus. He said, Jesus told you I didn't have to die. I said, Jesus said, you can live or not die. He said, well, I want to live then. I laid hands on him. He hollered out and he said, You know what? Every pain is gone. He said, What should I do now? I said, Go quickly back down and get your down payment back. Tell him you believe you'll live and not die. That's what David said. I believe I'll live and not die and declare the works of God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He came to that meeting, hold me free from pain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, healed by the power of God. And he done paid down on his funeral, bought his suit, picked out his own suit. I may die, but I ain't picking out my suit. And I ain't putting my name on no tombstone either. You can all you want. Don't put my name on no tombstone. Got one dead and the other got his name. Every time I pass by that thing, he'd be calling me. I dream about it. I'd be dead in two, three days, but I put my name. I ain't dead yet. I don't want no representative. I don't want nothing to do with it. That's right. Praise God. I may just do like Elijah. I ain't it. Just go walking one day. And just the Lord called me up. Hallelujah. Ain't no 
Kevin how many folks Woo! left here without a funeral? Hey. Elijah didn't have a funeral. Enoch didn't have no funeral. God took him. Yes, sir. He left his testimony. He pleased God. Hallelujah. So if you please the Lord, the Lord may just come down and just take you like you did a lot. Sure. Praise the Lord. One day we're all going to go. Amen. We're all going to go without death. We hear when Jesus comes. I was a dead in Christ shall rise first. And then that alive and remain is ready to meet God. We ain't going to die. We're going to shoot. We're going to leave him without death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, truth, I'd rather do that. Than to go to the funeral thing. I'd rather him just let me go walking like he did in it. Put down the stairs, let me walk up. Oh, if I'm here with Jesus come, I ain't worried about that. I ain't worried about that. No hell, but that just ain't my favorite way of leaving here. <laughs> what about you? Amen. I ain't, I ain't front and line. Amen. Praise. Come on. I'm not rushing it up. And you say, Amen. But then that alive remains shall be caught up together with them in there. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. We won't die. Can you say amen? amen? Lift your hands and praise. Amen. Tell the Lord you love him. I said, tell Jesus you appreciate him. But the rich man, if the desires of him, he didn't torment Cried and saw Lazarus and Abraham brother and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his feet in water. Cool my parching tongue, for I'm tormented. And these flames, it's real, folks. Heaven is real. Hell is real. We need to know that today. We don't need to push back the reality of what it's about when you leave this old world. Praise God. He said, Son, you remember back on earth. You had all the good things and Lazarus was a beggar. Now he's at peace. He's at rest. But you're in torment. He said, Father Abraham, if you won't do that, send somebody back to warn my five brothers not to come to this awful place. For I'm torment these things. He said, they got Moses and the prophets. If they won't hear them, they won't hear one that's raised from the dead. Oh, but Father Abraham, if you just send somebody, praise God, somebody to warn, they won't hear Moses and all the prophets. They won't hear either. We hear one that's raised from the dead. It's real today. But Jesus has sent us to show compassion. I thought about that dog here. About to, an old priest went by, saw the man beat up and bloody. The Bible said he passed over on the other side. Didn't want nothing to do with it. You know that that's that's the, it's like a hospital. You know, hospital. That doctor ain't an investigator. They rush somebody in that shot, almost dead. He don't say, "What did you do? Why did you do it?" He's bleeding to death. No, that ain't the doctor's job. The doctor's job ain't to investigate the crime. It's to keep the man alive. And that's saying something else. Our job ain't to investigate the crime. Our job ain't to investigate why did you get in this mess. But our job is to try to keep him alive. Get him to the cross. Get him to the feet of Jesus. That's our job. Get him in before it's too late. Not to investigate. Fact of it is, I don't find where Jesus ever tried to investigate. When they brought the woman that was caught in the dust, Jesus did not. They didn't want to investigate. Then Pharisees and Sadducees brought her to Jesus and said, Master, Moses' law said, Stone, if you catch him in the dust, what do you say? 
Oh, Jesus knew what the law said. He could have been that preacher if he'd have just said, give me this stone. I'll show you what we're supposed to do. But he didn't. This is what he said. He that's without sin among y'all, let him throw the first stone. He knelt down. Can I get a mark on him? Well, he didn't investigate. He had compassion. He forgave. You know, there's a difference in investigating and just forgiving the whole thing. You know, that judge has got the power. Instead of keep digging, he just said, look. Bam! This case is done with. And man, he signs that paper. That's it. You can't bring that back in the court of law again. Ain't that good about Jesus? Once Jesus forgives you, it can never be brought up against you again. Once the blood of Jesus washes it away, it can never be brought up against you ever again. It's done for good. And Jesus said, is it marked on the ground? And when he started marking on the ground, they started dropping the rocks. One by one, it convicted their heart. The reason on that said, he that hadn't done this sin, Somewhere in your life, you throw the first rock. You think, oh Jesus. Yeah. He's called me. I thought I had it here. He that hath not done this sin, let him cast the first stone. And he bent back down on the ground, started right again. One by one. He stood back up. And there wasn't nobody there but him and the woman. All them investigators was gone. All them critics was gone. She was still the same woman and still committed the same sin. But all the critics was gone. He said, woman, where are those accused? He said, I have none, Lord. And this is what he said. Neither do I can do. But go and sin. No more. Thank God when you... He that the Son is made free is free indeed. And when Jesus makes you free, you're free. No matter what people think, you're free. And so the priest passed by, and I'm fixing the hush. And wouldn't have nothing to do with the man. Left him laying there, bleeding. And next, the Levi come by, and he spotted him, and he went way to the other side of the street. You know, you can act like you don't know a situation is going on. But God knows when you know it. Some people know it and they act like they don't. Well, ooh, they did. You already know it. You just ain't going to fool with it. You didn't want to help. Oh, y'all was taking up money from it. You knew it. Yes, you did know it. Come on. Yeah, that's the truth. Yes, you did. So the Levite went to the other side where nobody could say, I saw the Levite pass by. But you know what? This is the Bible, so God's writing. And he saw the Levite, and he also saw the priest. And he wrote it and told everybody on it. He told the world. We're still reading about that. Yes, sir. And knows he, he writes this to catch us all. Yeah. Fact of being is it'll catch us before we get guilty if we just listen. It'll save us from guilt. Because when, when that time comes about, we'll remember what the Lord said. He said, uh uh, I've done got knowledge of this. i got to do right. But long come a good Samaritan. After the priest and Levite, and left him better die. You know what that old good Samaritan done? He picked him up out of the ditch, showed compassion. Showed compassion. Bound him up, poured wine and oil on his wounds, took him to a hotel, paid for his room, and left some money. Said, if he has to stay long with this, I'll pay, I'll pay the rest. Yeah. When I get back, when I come back through. Praise God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, praise God. He told us to go and do thy life. You go do this. 
Who's your friend? Who's your brother? And he used that parable. Praise God to show. And he turned and said, you go and do likewise. Praise God. You show mercy. You show mercy. But you know that old, that old lawyer tried to justify us there. Who is my neighbor? He said, love your neighbor. He said, well, who is my neighbor? Trying to justify us now. Then he gave him that parable. Then he turned and said, you ask me a question, who is my, who is my neighbor? Now you go and treat your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. You see your brother, that's your neighbor. You see somebody in need, that's your neighbor. I don't know the man, he's still your neighbor. God said he's your neighbor. So love your neighbors yourself. Stand on your feet. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, don't you love him today? Don't you appreciate him? Lift your hands and Lord. I want to give compassion to him. Lord, I want to show compassion. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he loves you today. Jesus loves you. All to Jesus. I surrender. We used to sing that old song. All to Jesus. I surrender. All to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust in His presence. I freely live. Praise God. Don't you love Him today? All to Jesus. I surrender. Thank God. Do you feel like surrendering today? Just say, Lord, you find me so much. You find me me so much and I'm glad yes, yes. that you find me and you tell me the truth. I just want to surrender. Yes. Not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. Lord, I know I ain't perfect yet, but I want to be. Yes, God. Lord, I want you to fix me. I want you to put me together. I want you to take all these old broken pieces and know that God knows where every piece goes. Every piece. Yes. He knows where every them broken pieces go. Hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands and tell the Lord you love him. Come on, tell him you love him. Will you surrender today? Thank you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Won't you tell them all to me? I surrender. All to him. I free to give. Ain't it about time? Ain't it about time? Time is winding up. Oh, look around. Somebody took him by the hand and said, Ain't it about time to just sell out? Told him. Ain't it about time? Find God with all your heart. Ain't it about time to get a shovel and just dig down till you find the rock and say from me, now on, this is where I'm going to be. I'm not going to waste my time on the sand. I'm going to build on the rock. Can you say that? Lift your hands and praise. Tell the Lord you love. Come on and tell him you love. Hallelujah. Oh, that old song said, all to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. Oh, I clever love trust Him in His presence lately. You surrender the name. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Oh, I want you to come and just stand before the altar. If you today, praise God, want to just surrender your all to me. He said, well, I've surrendered. But I'm talking about just making another step of faith. 
and stand here before this altar and say, Lord, I want to surrender everything. God, whatever it is I'm holding on to, whatever, God, that I'm lacking in, what I'm holding back on, Lord, I, I, I just want to give it to you. I just want to surrender. I just want to surrender. Lord, something in the back of my mind you're telling me to get, give up, let go. Something in the back of my mind you're telling me you need to stop it. You need to straighten out. You know better than this. But Lord, today I surrender. Lord, I surrender my whole heart. Lord, just like it was. I remember when I first got saved, Lord, there wasn't nothing left. God, there wasn't nothing in my heart left. I surrendered all. I walked out of that place totally free from everything. I have nothing holding on to me. Lord, I surrender. Lord, today we surrender. We stand here before you, before your presence, Lord. God, and we surrender. We surrender our all. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our lives. Lord, just tell it, Lord, I surrender all. I will surrender my life. God, if you can use me, then here I am, Lord. God, if you can take me and use me for your benefit and your kingdom, here I am. Without hold back. Lord, without hold back. God, without hold back, I surrender. I will surrender my everything. I surrender my all. All to thee. I surrender. All to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust you. In your presence, I feel it. In. Lord, I give it all to you. Lord, I hold nothing back today. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, standing before your altar. With all my heart, I give of myself to you. I let go of the things that's holding me back. I let go today. Of the things that's causing me to stumble, causing me to be hit. I let go today with all my strength, with all my effort. Lord, it's like that old song, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, if you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you up. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Oh God, we bring it to you today. All the things that hinder us, all the things that stood in our way has caused revival to linger. Lord, I remember the book. Why revival tarries. Lord, there's a reason when you've written in the Bible why revival tarries. And Lord, it comes that we are the fault, not you. You, you paid it all. Lord, you've done, done it all. You've done it. You, you paid the price. You bought us. You redeemed us. You took a whooping on your back that we could be healed. Lord, you set us free where we can live in peace. Oh, Lord, today, I give it all. All to thee, I surrender. All to you, I freely give. I would ever love and trust you in your presence. Take them all to thee. All to him I freely. Oh, I will ever love and trust him in your presence. Daily. Oh, I surrender all. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Praise the Lord. God bless you today. Thank you, Jesus. Take it with you. Take it with you. Take this prayer that you prayed today with you. Let it be a daily prayer. Lord, today I surrender. 
today I surrender my life all over fresh again to you. Praise God. We're going to give you a chance to do